A pleasant good night to all the saints that is viewing us tonight on the World Wide Web tonight. We want to say welcome. We want to say come and have a time with us. Come and worship and praise God and to hear the word of God tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord tonight. Oh. come to give back to you yeah. I have come to say thank you Lord we have come we have come I have come to give back to you we have come we have come I have come to say thank you Lord they call the pray they call the pray Take all the praise, take all the praise, you deserve. Take all the praise, take all the praise. I have come to say thank you, Lord. I have come to lift up my hand. I have come to lift up my hand. Say thank you, Lord. We have come to lift up our hands. I have come to lift up my hands. We worship you. I have come to say thank you, Lord. Take all of the praise. Take all the praise. Take all the praise. Shout! I have come to lift up a shout. Hallelujah! You are the Most High God. I have come to say thank you, Lord. I have come to lift up a shout. I have come to lift up a shout. Hallelujah! We praise you, Jesus. I have come to say thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. I have come to give back. I have come to give back to you. Hallelujah. And I have come to say thank you, Lord. Take all of the praise. Take all the praise. You deserve it, Jesus. Take all the praise. To say thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And I have come to say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We 
down, we bow down tonight. We bow down. And we worship, we worship. We worship. We worship Yahweh. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. We bow down tonight. We bow down. And we worship. Praise the Lord, saints. I want to greet everyone again in the precious name of Jesus. It's good to be together again. It's good to be in your homes. And wherever you are, wherever you are viewing from, let me uh, greet all the saints from Kunupia and from uh, Central Shagwanas, from Brazil Village, and here in Port of Spain, wherever you are. Good evening, and uh, it's good to be in your homes as we conduct again this Bible study. Let us begin in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for your presence that I feel right now. This powerful, yoke-breaking, mountain-moving, earth-shaking, demon-destroying power and anointing. I thank you. Lord, let your presence invade every home. Let your presence rise. And cause your people to understand what I'm about to share today. Let this be a holy moment, a holy time in the powerful, the most awesome name of your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you, O oh God, in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Saints of God, I feel the presence of God and I know at the end, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. And yokes are going to be broken. Father, we give you praise. Amen. I want to encourage you to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I see Paul said rejoice. Whatever you are going through, we have a reason to rejoice in the Lord. God is in control. We are his servants. And we are blessed. Hallelujah. So now I want to continue on the study of government. Now, the reason why I'm constantly going at this is because it is important. And I want to make sure that we don't miss anything. So step by step, piece by piece, we go through what you might have missed the last time. You might pick up this time. But I deem it very important, very, very important. And so we go through it again. And so, I just want to read a few verses again. I'm not going to read a whole chapter. I'm just going to read the first seven verses of the book of Romans. And then we're going to continue to flow from there. Romans chapter 13 from verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whosoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist 
will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good work, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do, do that which is good. Do what is good, and you will have the praise of the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. For if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore you must be subject not only for not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For they are God's ministers attending continually to the very thing. Render therefore to all their due. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Customs to whom customs. Fear to whom fear. And honor to whom honor. So, as I've said over the previous studies, I put in context the necessity for Paul uh, developing this theology on government and how Christians should relate because of the fact that the church came out of Judaism and at that time was viewed as a Jewish sect and uh, the Jews had an adverse attitude toward Roman government for many different reasons, of course, they were humiliated, subjugated as a nation who previously, uh, in the time of David, were at the zenith of their glory as a nation. So they would have always, they would have always remembered that and longed for the day when the yoke of Rome would have been lifted. There was also tension because of the Roman taxing system, which allowed the tax collector to access huge profits for himself. And so uh, these and a number of other issues would have caused Paul to write so that the church will not follow in the path as many would have with Judaism and give a different image to the Roman Empire regarding Christianity. Uh, and uh, this, what Paul has written, gives us insight and information on how we as Christians in a normal situation should relate to government. Some people will say, okay, that was Rome and that was the time of Nero. But the truth is up to this time, Nero was not always persecuting the church. When Paul wrote Romans, the church was not facing the persecution of Nero. So I went through all of that, and uh, we don't have to go through it again. The fact is this. As Christians, we should have a healthy respect for secular government because they are, they are secular government is an institution instituted by God in our world for law and order. Just as the church is an institution, the family is an institution, government is an institution instituted by, instituted by God. But remember, I made it clear that governmental power has its boundaries and it has its limits. So Jesus said, render to all their dues, render to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God that which is God's. And so cutting through a lot of the stuff that we went through before, I made it clear that uh, while we recognize government authority and we don't, as Christians, subscribe to the culture of the time where people rebel against the police in a flagrant and outlandish manner and where some refer to the police as Babylon and so forth. That is ignorance. We don't subscribe to that period. Christians should be always portraying the image of law-abiding citizens more than anyone else. Having said that, there comes a time when as the church, we may have to stand up for our rights and even challenge the, the power of the government should they, should they overstep 
their boundaries. And this is what I want to deal with because this is the reality that we are facing in our times. And I believe, you know, the word of God says, a wise man foresees evil and hides himself. But the fool passes on and is punished. And I believe it is incumbent and binding upon pastors to prepare their people for what is coming. Because what is coming is coming. What is coming, in a sense, is here. And it is coming and it's going to build momentum. So we need to prepare people. So I look at the fact that there, there are several instances in the Bible where godly men did not go along with the governmental jurisdiction. They did not even go along with laws that were passed. Okay? At least we have an instance of that in the life of Daniel, and I'm going to reference that again. I looked at Stephen, first of all, in the New Testament, who stood up against the Jewish elders in Acts chapter 7, verse 51 through 60. Stephen became the first martyr because he confounded the authorities of his day. Because you have to remember that these were the same people that crucified Jesus and uh, many of his disciples were afraid because they felt that uh, they would have been next in line to suffer. And indeed, many of them did. But Stephen stood up, the Bible tells us in Acts 7 verse 51, from verse 51, he said to them, you stiff neck and uncircumcised of heart, of heart and ears, you always do resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. And uh, because of this and many other words that I'm not going to read everything now, Stephen was killed. Stephen was martyred because he challenged the authority of his day. And uh, we looked at also Peter's statement in Acts 4, 19 and 20. Peter said, from verse 19 it says, but Peter and John answered and said, whether it, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. These are profound words. Also in Acts 5 and verse 29, it says, Peter, but Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. And so they were challenging the government of the Jews, the authorities of the Jews. And they were saying, we ought to obey God rather than men. And this is a blanket statement. This is a broad statement. And this could be applied in our present time. It could, it could apply to our government. As a matter of fact, it could apply anywhere. Any man, any institution that goes against God's clear command to the church, the church has no right to obey. I remember being in, when we had the first lockdown, I was in conversation with my pastor because I called him personally and I asked him. See, I could still call my pastor, think about that, and ask him questions. And we had a nice conversation. And, uh, and so he was saying, well, you know, pandemic and, and, and so forth, and the government seemed to be doing their stuff. And of course, at that time, we just heard. I mean, we were not even locked down. We just heard lockdown for a week. And phone, phones were ringing, and we were concerned, because when I still remember, this has never happened in the history of the church. And I remember him saying, he said, one of the things he said, he said, look, if the government does anything contrary to the clear command of God given to the church, he said, we will have to obey. To disobey, rather. We will have to disobey. He said, this is the very reason why the church was persecuted. And he, he, he made an illustration uh, with a call to preach, where Jesus said, go into all the world and preach. He said, that is our mandate. And if they were to stop that, we have to obey God. And uh, so we see here that Peter and they felt that they had to obey God rather than, 
rather than man. This is something that I want, I want us to be clear with. I want us to, to settle. Now, I'm not telling you whether uh, this commandment goes against God and we should disobey. I, I, we will get to that. But I'm saying we should settle that there is such a point where we have to obey God rather than man. And it, it, You know, we don't talk about this much, but every apostle died except John. John was given up to die, given up for dead on the Isle of Patmos. And while they thought he was dead, he received a revelation of Jesus Christ. And the, that's how we have the book of Revelation. But Peter died. They said, they said that he was crucified upside down. Stephen, I think they said he died in India. A dart or something went through his heart. Matthew, every apostle, they went to different parts of the world. And because they preached contrary to what men wanted, and because they chose to obey God, they died. As a matter of fact, it was on those very, on that same premise, Christ was crucified. So we can't get away from it. This is Christianity. And the gaps are closing and we are living in serious times. May it never happen to us. But you need to be forewarned. You need to be educated. You need to understand. Because I feel very queasy with some of the song bites I'm hearing from people. And the church, particularly in this nation, is so divided politically. We are divided politically and racially. And so people will always leverage against the party that they are against and obey. Or, or disagree, rather, with the, with the other person. And many times, their judgments are clouded by their party affiliation. And I'm just throwing, throw, throwing this out just to, so that you will connect with what I'm saying in reality. A lot of things the PNM did. If the UNC had done it, well, I'm telling you, some of you all be getting nightmares. You know, when they did Section 34, as bad as it was, you know, uh, the PNM did wrong things too. But because of our party affiliation, many times we, we don't make much of it. You know, this side is the devil, this side is God. This side is for Christianity. This, none of them are for Christianity, really. And there are Christians on both sides. Sister Christine O'Sign was on with the UNC. I mean, we, we are friends. We have been speaking all through her, 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 her tenure, the greater part. And she stood many times. She would speak to her prime minister, Mrs. Kamala Prasad, but be says, and tell her, look, I don't agree with this and, and, and so forth. And so I'm just throwing that out there that we must be careful of taking political sides. And then as a church too, we are divided racially. So a lot of the East Indian brethren, they are on the, for the UNC. A lot of the African American, a lot of the Afri Afro Trinidadians, they are for PNM. But these things ought not to be. We are Christians. And we ought to be able to see through the lens, not of a party, but through the lens of the scripture. I also shared with you, and this is profound, and I will repeat it again, Daniel. How Daniel disobeyed the law of the king of Persia when Darius, the king at the time, signed into law a decree that anyone that is, who is found praying to any god besides the king of Persia, he must be thrown into a den of hungry lions. The Bible says, in Daniel chapter 6, 7 through 10, all the governors of the kingdom, the administrators, the satraps, the counselors, and advisors have counseled together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whosoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. So they made, they petitioned the king to make a law 
anybody who prays to any God for the next 30 days, except to the king, because in those times they would have worshipped the king, emperor worship, and so forth. But anybody who prays to any God besides the king will be thrown into the den of lions. Verse 8 says, Now, O king, establish the decree, sign the writing. Notice that. This is law. So that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius, therefore, King Darius signed the writing, the written decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, look at this now. The, let, let, let me just slow down here. The law was confirmed. It was settled. And the Bible says, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees. What is Daniel going to do? But the king said for 30 days. Daniel's supposed to be a righteous man. For 30 days, no prayer, Daniel. Are you rebelling? What kind of citizen are you? He knelt down and watched this. He prayed three times. <laughs> three times a day, the Bible says. He knelt down and prayed to God, and he gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. And I shared with you, this is profound also, why Daniel did that. Because he did it because in 1 Kings 8, 35 to 39, Solomon had said that if ever the time comes when God's people are in trouble, he said if they pray with their hands straight forward toward Jerusalem, whether it is one person or many, if they do that, and he was specific, not just pray, but pray with your hands straight forward toward Jerusalem. He said to God, I want you to hear and answer their prayers. And so when you look at 1 Kings, I will just go down to the specific verse to save some time. 1 Kings 8 and verse 38. It says, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone, or by all your people Israel. And that is specific because Daniel realized, though as one man, he could have prayed and affect the nation of Israel because it was written in the word of God that even if one man prays from a sincere heart, God will respond. And so, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, when each one knows the plague of his own heart or acknowledges his sin, come in a humble posture, with a humble posture. Watch this. And spreads out his hands toward this temple. So Daniel would have put a temple, a, a, a window facing Jerusalem. Let's put up that verse again. Whatever prayer Whatever supplication, whosoever be, whatever, what, let me read it from the King James. What prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel, which know it, or which know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands. Toward this house. Verse 39 says, Then hear from heaven. Next verse. Hear from heaven your dwelling. Hear from heaven your dwelling place. I'm reading from the New King James, but let me read it from the King James now. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive. And do 
And give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men. So these were the words of Solomon. And so that is why Daniel felt he was obligated to pray in that manner. And even if you were to take away the spreading of the hands, Daniel felt he had to pray. The command that the law was against praying. So I want us to see this. This is the word of God. And what did he do? He disobeyed the word of the king to obey the word of God. The truth is this. Nobody but nobody has a right to tell the church they cannot pray together, they cannot come together, they cannot worship together. Nobody has that right. And uh, you say, well, it's COVID and so forth. And I acknowledge that, and that is why we are not here right now. But I'm saying this, that that cannot, because I don't know what they will try in the future. That cannot be done irrationally. That cannot be done disproportionately. That cannot be done unjustly, as it is being done in many quarters and many parts of the world. We are telling Christians they can't sing. Remember the pastor in the States who is, has been charged 52,000 US. Every day he keeps his church open, 5,000, 10,000. They keep, re they keep raising it. And he said he's not going to shut down. He doesn't care how much money they charge him. He's not going to shut down because as a pastor, he feels that his rights are being infringed on. And uh, are they testing the waters now? Are they looking to see if we can shut them down ever so often? They shut down the church. So this become the norm. Every year they shut us down about six times. They just shut us down when they want. And then they could try to push it longer. Well, I understand that the present lockdown is supposed to end this Saturday. And we are left to hear what the government will say as to whether they will open the church, how they will open the church, what will happen. Okay? Now... Nobody could look at this scripture with Daniel and say, well, you know, uh, that is Daniel, but, uh, you know, that does not apply to us. If, if we think like that, we will have to get rid of the Old Testament, as some cults have done. Tear away the Old Testament and say, I only want the new. And that is wrong because the Bible is clearly one book. And I have, been, I have labored here enough to show you that if, even if we're going to talk about Old and New Testament, there is a way to rightly divide the word of truth. And uh, there's a scripture that I'm, I'm going to try to get to share with you in a, in a while. But, uh, but the fact is, not only do we have Daniel, we have Peter also that says we must obey God rather than man. And the proof text that I use, is Hebrews 10 and verse 25, let's, let's look at that. Hebrews 10 and verse 25. And I can quote it from my head. It says that not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. And uh, we commented, I commented on the fact that that is why the churches in, Ken, in uh, Nigeria and China and so forth uh, they are suffering because they risk their life to come together to fellowship. And so we got to calculate at times and make calculated risk. You know, it's like when you take medicine, every time you take a medication, you know, it's a calculated risk. You are putting substances in your body that could kill you, but the risk is very small, so you don't expect to die. But sometimes we got to, you know, prepare for the future. Like when we, we may have to do like the churches in Nigeria and uh, and the church in, in, in Japan, 
uh, not Japan, but China, and the church in North Korea, and even some of the brethren that are facing persecution, who would believe we'll be talking about this in the United States? Okay? We are living in very, very evil time. We are living, there is a system out there that wants to destroy Christianity. And this is where, where I want to go now. And uh, so, we need to understand this. I've been saying this so for, for a while, even before there was any lockdown, so it should make it easy for, for you to pick up and flow with me and see where I'm going. We looked at the fact that in Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had his dream about the worldly governmental system beginning from Babylon to Medo-Persia to Greece to Rome. He saw this colossal image. And then in uh, Daniel chapter 7, Daniel himself had a dream that replicated the same thing that Nebuchadnezzar saw. In this, this time, he did not see, a, he did not see an, an image of a man, but he saw different beasts. And uh, God used the beast because that's how political, secular government behave. They behave like beasts. And uh, so he saw these different beasts, but they all represented the same declension of governmental power, Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, Rome, and the revived Rome, the legs of iron mixed with clay. And uh, in Daniel chapter 7, something important is said from uh, verse 6 and 7 concerning this political system. And probably I should just read through a couple of verses. Let's read from verse 1. It says, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and the vision of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream and tell the main facts. Daniel spoke, saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, four winds of the heaven were stirring up the great sea. And four great beasts came out of the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. That's Babylon. And I watched till the wings were plucked off. That's the fall of Babylon. And it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. And a man's heart was given to it. Verse 5. Suddenly another beast, second like a bear, it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise and devour much flesh. That's Middle Persia. After this I looked, and there was another like a leopard, and, uh, which had on its back four wings of a bird. That's Greece. And uh, Greece, ne uh, Alexander the Great conquered the world very quickly, moving swiftly as a leopard. And it had, the leopard had four wings. After he died, he died very young. His empire was divided into four, and four of his generals, four of his generals ruled the empire. And the, the one that protruded the most was the empire of the Seleucids, from which you get Antiochus Epiphanes during the intertestamental period, and after that, Rome would have come. And this is from verse 7, it says, After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth, a fourth beast, now notice this fourth beast. This fourth beast is the beast that Jesus will destroy when he comes. Because this will be the last governmental empire. This will extend from the legs of iron right down to the feet of iron mixed with clay, which will represent the weakest form of government, you know, mixture, corruption. And the Bible says a stone in Daniel chapter 2 was cut out of the mountain without hands struck the, the, the image of the man on its feet and pulverized the image, destroyed it. And the, the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So we know that when Christ comes, this last kingdom coming out of Rome will be the kingdom 
with that Jesus will strike and take over uh, and, uh, at the battle of Armageddon. That will be the end of the seven years of tribulation and set up his millennial kingdom on the earth for a thousand years. Now, I want us to see something further in Daniel chapter 7. As I said, he gave the same four empires, but he referred to them as beasts. And now look at the last one. From verse 6, it says, After this I looked, and there was another, like a leopard which had on his back. Now that's the third. Verse 7, After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, Watch this now. Dreadful and terrible. I'm reading from the New King James. Dreadful. None of these words were used to describe those that went before. And I want us to understand this. This is the heart of what I'm saying today. This is, this is where I'm really going. I want us to understand that we are transitioning into a form of government that is dreadful, that is different, that is evil. It says dreadful and terrible. A lot of the things you're hearing in the news, dreadful and terrible, dreadful and terrible. So when you, when you, when you say, wow, this thing is dreaded, it's terrible, you're quoting scripture. Exceedingly strong. Exceedingly strong. A lot of the billionaires are the, uh, in the world are supporting this, this system. A lot of the movers and the shakers, the power breakers, power brokers. It is amazing that the people with the money and the influence have just turned gay and LGBT and supporting this liberal belief, this neo-Marxism. Let me explain to you what is neo-Marxism because this is important to understand so that we understand what is happening. Marxism was used, Marxism, communism, uh, socialism, all these are sort of interchangeable terms. And they were used to come against capitalism. Because capitalism, which means that a man can prosper and get wealthy if God bless him, and that's his money. You have to work for your own money. Don't expect the state to mine you. But communism says nobody owns everything. The state owns everything. And everybody gets equal pay. And that is what has Cuba how it is. And Venezuela. Because once nobody, everybody's getting the same pay, nobody's motivated to work harder, to be creative, or so. But uh, Mao Zedong of China killed 64 million Chinese to bring that in. And how much 30 something Lenin and uh, Russia and Germany caused a lot of people to be slaughtered, well, particularly Russia, to bring in communism and socialism. What it is saying is, what they basically said, the philosophy was this. The poor people are oppressed by those that are owning companies and so forth, and that is unjust. The, the managers and the workers, that gap between them, there should be no gap. Everybody should be one. Now, how, do, how does that come about to Christianity? That failed. What the devil wanted to do was to bring down Christianity. Bring down America. Because America has been, and Canada, the vanguard of Christianity. And capitalism is founded on biblical norms, biblical principles. That is what we call a worldview. That is why in the Bible, I mean, Solomon was rich, David was rich, and Jesus said, the rich and the poor, you always have. The poor you will always have. Okay? So socialism, it sounds good, but it's of the devil. When we say, when we talk, so that is called Marxism. Okay, but because the person who invent, brought in the theory, the theory is, is, is Karl Marx. So he called it Marxism. Now, how do you, what, what, what do we mean when we talk about cultural Marxism? We enter a new word there, culture. This is saying now there should be equality, not in economy, but in culture. In other words, we all should be equal. You cannot call people, you can't look down on the gays. And, and they are adding to that 
economic equality also. Out of that, you have cultural, uh, you have multiculturalism. Accept all the cultures. They all are equal. So, to, the, so watch this now. The Christians are seen as the managers and those who are living in sin as the workers. And we must give up our rights and freedom and become equal with everybody. That is cultural Marxism. That is the ideology that started in some of the universities. So we must not discriminate. Everybody must be on the same page. Are you hearing me, saying? This is what is being pushed. So behind all of this, let me tell you what the problem is in the world. The problem is Christianity. The problem is the church. How to get rid of the church? They try all how. They infiltrate the church. They have joke preachers saying they, 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 they are preaching and they're running drugs and they're divorcing and they're remarrying and they're doing all of this. They infiltrate many Christian churches and institutions deliberately through Freemasonry and Satanism right in the United States. Try to buy out preachers and so forth, but you cannot destroy what Jesus is building. And so... The problem in the world is the church. How to get rid of the church. And I'm saying all of that to let us know that we must not be naive. We must not be gullible. Behind all the things that are happening is an attempt to destroy the church. And let me say this now. Up to now, we are still hearing pandemic, pandemic, which is this a planned thing? What is really going on? And there's a lot of confusion. Mass, no mass. Should we wear mass? Should we not wear mass? And all I am saying is, regardless of what happens, we have to serve God. We have to fellowship. We have to come together at some point. And if the day comes when I cannot come to you, no. That you still have to meet. And if, if you are persecuted for your rights, just remember what I taught you today. You still have to do, you have to, you have to be faithful till death. Okay? The, 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 the concept that we could save our skin and everybody is afraid, nobody wants to stand up and challenge everything, and everybody's backing in our corner. If I teach that, if I project that, something else has to be wrong with me. It's the souls of people I'm dealing with. This is not bread and butter. This is not, this is souls. So I have to teach the truth so that you can make it to heaven because we're going to lose this whole world anyhow. We're all going to die. It's just a matter of time. But we want to go to heaven. And we are coming up against evil. And so I have to prepare you, show you from the word of God, what is, what is at stake? So let me continue here. So again, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 7, after this, in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast. I'm showing you the, the system of the last day, the governmental system. It's dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring and breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its feet. Watch this, saints of God. It was different from all the beasts that were before it. Do you see that? The King James said it was diverse from all the beasts, all the beasts that went before, that were before it. It was Diverse. It was different. So hear me. What we are facing now is what? Different. So, you, so now you, I'm connecting. So when I spoke about Romans chapter 13 on government and, and describe what, what, what the government is and how the government is supposed to, to function, I am telling you now that we are entering into a period that is different. And if we don't look into the word of God and see these things and mark them, we would be in darkness. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path in these last days. 
And if we see all these things in the word of God and blind our eyes, that is apostasy. We have just walked away from the truth, walked away from God. Okay, so we can't afford to do that. The church has to for arm itself now. Look at verse 9. It said, I watched till thrones were put in place and the ancient of, the ancient of days were seated. So in the time of this government, Christ comes as the ancient of days. You see that? So, we, so when we begin to see a shift in the governmental system, neo-Marxism, cultural Marxism, multiculturalism, no discrimination, Black Lives Matter, burning Bibles, Black Lives Matter, I understand, is a cult steep in Orisha and all kind of satanic uh, rituals. But they, they use that statement, and, which is true, so the devil bowl a ball at the church, and the church don't know how to bat. So Black Lives Matter is a true statement. But the truth is, all lives matter. And uh, although Black Lives Matter, behind Black Lives Matter is an evil, wicked, satanic plan. And so, all of these things are coming together. Imagine people are saying, uh, this ban police stations in America. What foolishness. How you, how you could shut down? Yeah, there may be some bad white police. I agree with that. But there are some bad black guys also. Two wrongs don't make a right. That is demonic. If, you, if, you, if there are no police operating, there is chaos on the earth or in, or in any community. Okay? It's like you're making a massive hole to stop a little one. That does not make sense. But this is the ideology. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a satanic system coming in. Okay, I think I've said enough there. Now, I want us to see what John said about this again in Revelation chapter 13 about this new system. I want us to understand that what is coming in this world in these last days is a one world government, one world economy, and one, world, one religion. Let me say that again. One world political government, one world religion, and one world economy. That has never happened before. And that, that will be part of this new beast that is strong and great and dreadful and terrible and it will be very blasphemous against God and it will hate Christians and persecute Christians and I want to show you these three things that I spoke about because some of you might have heard one world government where in the Bible is that one world religion where in the Bible is that one world economy where in the Bible is that well you will you don't have to ask these questions I'm going to show you and you're going to have the references look at Revelation chapter 13 verse 1 it says, then I, then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up from the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and on his horns, ten crowns, and his heads, a blasphemous name. Remember in Daniel 7, all the governments were referred to as beasts. But here, the last system is referred to again, as one beast, one beast representing the whole thing from start to finish. And uh, so there's where you have the one world government, one beast rising, not four. This will be the last empire. And uh, let me read it again, Revelation 13, 13 and verse one. I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising where? Up out of the sea. The sea represents nations. Nations, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. So that is the political system. Let's look at the religious system, and then we're going to look at the financial system. From verse 4, so they worship the dragon which gave authority to the beast, and they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So you see that? They worship. 
When we talk about worship, you're talking about a religious system. And this religious system will be part and parcel of the one world government. So it will be a one world religious system. And the Bible says, he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make, watch this, war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe and tongue and nation. And if you read the whole chapter, which I am, I am not doing, you will see the false prophet mentioned there and the false prophet involved. And notice that authority was given over every tribe, tongue, and nation. So this false religion will be a false thing coming out of the beast system, everybody worshiping together. And the Bible tells us that the whole world will worship the dragon. Now, let's, let's look at the financial part of it from verse 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand and on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. So, you will have a one world political system, a one world religious system, and a one world economy with a one world currency. And whoever, and whenever, and however, all these things come together, that is global control. I mean, any one of them by themselves is unusual. But for the three of them to come together, who can escape? Who can escape? It will be terrible upon the face of the earth. Uh, Pope Francis has been busy bridging the gap. You know, he's called Pont Pontifex Maximus. You know what Maximus means? That was a name given to the Roman emperor. emperor. It means the bridge builder. The bridge builder. And uh, he's building bridges. And do you know that after the Reformation, from 1517 through Martin Luther, when he put his theses on the door of the church in Wittenberg, Germany, the Reformation was sparked. The, to counter the Reformation, the order of the Jesuits of the Catholic Church was instituted. And I understand that these are very, very, these are like, these are like the Greenberry of America. I mean, these are highly trained men, highly educated, to undercover carry out the dirty work of the church, of the Pope. I mean, they are cutthroats. They have sworn allegiance to do certain wicked things. And they have never been a Jesuit Pope for that reason, never until now. Pope Francis is a Jesuit. But I have something that will shock you. Do you know that Anthony Fauci, by his own words, admitted that to be a Jesuit, trained, highly trained dress, Jesuit, to bring social order? He was trained in that realm. So social order to, to the Catholics, to the Jesuit, is to bring power back to the papacy because that is why the Jesuits were invented. They were invented to conquer the Reformation, to... The, to reverse the reformation through whatever means they can. So these are not fly-by-night men. These are very intelligent men. Okay? So uh, Walter Vett has a video on that. And probably next week I will show some videos. I will show some videos because I discovered that one of the reasons why we were taken off, although we still have questions why you will go back years and, and say we, we, we did so, 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 and that is why you take us off. But uh, 
we understand it was because we shared a clip from somebody. They made a report. Well, so we were told. But probably I might share that because I know some of you are, probably have watched it already on your chat. But um, he shared some very profound things. And uh, let, let, let us go forward. So when the world comes together, one political system, one religious system, one financial system, that's going to be the Antichrist seat, the seat of Satan right there. Remember, in Bible, no Jewish king, you couldn't be king and priest at the same time. You couldn't be all of that. It was separated. So that is why when Uzziah went into the temple to burn incense, he became leprous. Because although he was a mighty king, God never mixed the religious and the, and the secular. He never mixed being the king and burning incense. You couldn't do that. that. That was for the priest. But he tried to bridge it. Only Jesus was king and priest, prophet, king and priest. And the devil now is trying to, 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 to take the glory of God and try to bring all these entities in the secular world that God himself had never brought together to bring them together in one and to blaspheme God and to persecute the church and to persecute Christians. And so, when we hear our government talking about e-identity card and also Jamaica, Maya Motlin in Barbados, the Eastern Caribbean countries. We are moving in that direction. We are moving in that direction. COVID or whatever is causing us to lock down and affect the church. Some strong satanic, and you know what? God himself said he will send a strong delusion. And I, I, you know, in my soliloquy, I think about all these things. Because God said he will send a strong delusion in the last days upon the Gentile world. The Gentile world has rejected him. People want to be in the church. They don't want to live right. They live in slack. God said he will send a strong delusion. So now, shut lockdown. Only the true saints who really love God is as if it will take place. They will hold on. They will remain faithful. Because while this COVID is going and spreading, they are working to push their agenda forward. And the church is confused. People are afraid. People are like, oh no, COVID, I can't come out of my house. People are not thinking about what the word of God says again. It's like everybody razzle-dazzle in their minds, scatter brain, you know, people all, the people. all people are thinking about is to save themselves. And, but if your eyes are open, for me as a man of God, I am seeing the lake of fire. I am seeing hell. I'm seeing end time prophecies. I'm seeing exactly what the Bible said will come upon the face of the earth. And now that it is coming upon the face of the earth, you think Believers will be more vigilant. Thank God for this church because, well, I was here last night and I haven't gone home since. I saw believers here. I was shocked. I was surprised. They were here. They were coming. They were praying. They didn't even know that I was staying back in church. So even they were just doing that because pastor was here. I said, but wait a minute. These people stayed back and they prayed and I felt in my heart. They said, boy, probably I've been doing your work. I've been doing my homework and I thank God for that. But even... We will, you know what? We will press in the press. And so, what the, pe people are, people are, look, saints of God, Jesus is coming. People acting like they are asleep. They don't understand what is taking place. And I, I am not here to deny the reality of COVID. But listen to me, there's more in the mortar than the pestle. Something is up. Something is wrong. The devil is moving strongly. And if ever the saints need to press in to the presence of God, it is now. I make no apologies for telling you that. This is the time for us to seek the face of God like never before. Come all night. Come and pray. Come if you want to come here, come. And when it's too late, just stay over and sleep. Listen. Let me give you some more references because I feel the anointing here and I want to pray for you. So there's going to be a one world government. Now listen, I want to share with you something very important. Remember I always told you that this government was attempted by Nimrod. In Genesis 11, 1 to 4. They tried to build this tower to reach heaven and God confounded their language. And uh, 
all of that is taking shape again. But I want to share this with you very importantly as I wrap this message, this teaching up. In Revelation chapter 18, it says, after these things from verse 1, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great authority and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and, ha and has become the dwelling place of demons, a prison of every foul spirit. I want you to see, when Jesus comes and he judged Babylon, you hear what John is, John is seeing the future. This Babylon that is rising now is going to fall and God is going to judge it. But I want you to see what some of the things he said about it. Babylon the Great, verse 2, is fallen, is fallen, and has become the dwelling place of what? Demons! A prison of every foul spirit, a cage of every, every, every unclean and hateful bird. And that is a reference to evil powers. And uh, verse 4, Verse 3, for all, watch this, for all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury or delicacies. So they commit fornication, in other words, they gave into that wicked system. Instead of giving in to God, they bow to Babylon. Verse 4 says, and I, watch this now, this is for the church. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquity. So listen to me, when we, see, when we see the nations of the world, including our nation, going into this new world order system, let us remember this text, saints of God. If we hold on and say, this is my party, and allow party politics to blind our eyes, then the Holy Spirit may withhold his truth from our hearts, you know. This is time to open up to God and say, Father, I belong to you first of all. Tell me what to do. This is time for us to begin to ask serious questions and detach ourselves from, from political affiliation. Now, I know I go out on a limb and I say this, but watch this. Let me tell you something. My name is Victor Gill and I don't care. You see, when it comes to the truth, that is what I'm preaching. Some people say, a friend of mine told me, he said, Brother Gil, if you only mention party, he said, hmm, some people are like, I don't want to come back to church. I said, let me tell you something. I said, you all could be afraid of that. I am not like that. I said, they know who I am, not only in my church, but in the nation. And as a matter of fact, they will expect me to say something. You all could be afraid, but not me. If it's truth, I say it. Okay? I'd rather 10 members stay here to serve God and I go to hell with 500. So that's not an issue for me. I have to tell you the truth. And the reason why I'm saying this, I could sense is a touchy, is a touchy issue. But I don't mind what I'm going to do. Be afraid and go to hell. The Bible says the watchman sees danger coming in the book of Ezekiel. And he doesn't warn the people. Their blood will be on his shoulder. It means if a watchman fell asleep and the enemy came in the camp, he had to pay with his life. That's what it means. So for me, my fear is not what people will do. My fear is what God will do with me. I have to speak the truth now. And many of you have to begin to pull back from your political affiliation and, 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 and so that the Holy Spirit can minister to you. Are you hearing me? Don't look at me funny because I have voted for all my life. And I never came out here and tell this church, you know, uh, vote for this party. Or it will not happen from this poll. I'm not so stupid. I'm not that naive. I'm not so simple-minded. But I've come to a point, and if you respect my leadership, 
And if you believe I'm a man of God, then you should listen to what I'm saying. I sense strongly that the Holy Spirit is saying, I thought I can't understand. When Christians know a government is going to cashless society, you go and vote for that and say, well, you know, you have to vote. I Listen to me, something in my spirit, something in my spirit telling me something is wrong with that. We are moving into a time that is abnormal. And the Bible says, come out of her, my people, that you share not in her sins. How far would we go? Well, some of many of you don't vote already. God alone knows what will happen in the next five years. So you're saying, Pastor, you're saying we sin before we, because we vote. No, 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 no. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to be that simplistic again. But what I'm saying is, I am telling you the time will come when we will have to ask ourselves, what should I do as the church? Because if you see somebody bringing in homosexuality and they're bringing in one world currency, you're going to go and vote for that. That's my point. Are you going to say, well, you know, it's my franchise. Your franchise could take you to hell. Certain things, the church, in other words, this thing has come to a point where the church has to say, I am no longer a part of that. And you don't have to go around and tell people that. You just have to know. You have to go and campaign and say, me ain't voting for nobody. I ain't this and that. You just have to hold your corner and keep quiet. I am speaking because I need to prepare you. I, I am your leader under God, the under shepherd. What he puts in my heart is what I must declare to you faithfully. And I am sensing the Lord is saying, when I come, don't be campaigning with wicked men, you know. Don't be putting your hands in this and saying, this is my party. Okay? There are things like budget and how the government was run through the years and so forth. And you know, God, every, every secular government, they drink their rum, they cuss, they lie and all this kind of thing. We, 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 we can't get away from that. We're in a sinful world. But when you see overt evil being perpetrated and this new system of government taking shape, probably in the next five years when it might come in in its real true strength and fullness, so I'm preparing you five years in advance. Don't put your finger to vote for things that could cause you your soul, cost you your soul. And let it be between you and God. If you want to vote and you feel God gave you a clearance and your vote might tip this, you go ahead. But I'm just teaching you what the Bible says. God says, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins. Come out of her, come out of her who? The system, the end time system, the end time government that will connect together. This is why everything we are hearing from our government, the WHO says, it has already started. It started since 1948. It started since after World War I, when the League of Nations were put together. I think it was President Woodrow Wilson of the United States. It, 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 they began, and then it went to the, to, the, to the UN. And the UN has been weak like a, a, a bulldog without teeth. But I think it was the last Pope, Ratzenegger, says we must give more teeth to the, to the UN. And then this Pope is pushing it, and all the nations are pushing it, and they say, get rid of Trump, and, and the world is coming together. And so we are seeing this thing happening. And I'm saying to the church, we are hearing one world government, one world financial system, bringing the gays, which the only way to play that ball, you know, let all these things settle. They're going and introduce all of those things. May God help us in this nation. And I'm asking the church, how far would you go? God said, this is the authority of scripture. This is where the box stops. Come out of her, my people. Revelation 18 and verse 4. Lest you what share in her sins. If you, if you don't listen to what I'm saying, you might, God may say, well, all what they did, you are part, you know. That's what the scripture is saying here. Okay? Why? Because you were still going on the line of rising sun, Bali a long time, um, roti and rum politics. Those days are over, my friend. Those days are over. It, whether side you're on, they're pushing the same thing. And we have to know that we must come out from among them. We are the church. 
come out from among them. This is a very unpopular uh, thing that I'm teaching here, but watch this. I'm going to teach it without blinking because it's the truth. Now, let me show you something else. Revelation 18, verse 19 and 13. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and live luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see her smoke, the, when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, at last, at last, the great Babylon, the city, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come, and the merchants of the earth will weep and moan over her. For no one buys their merchandise anymore. Merchandise, watch this, of gold and silver and precious stone and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and incense. That's Revelation 18. I'm now in verse 13. And cinnamon, and incense, and fragrant oil, I want, to, I want us to put up verse 13 especially. And frankincense, and the wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and cattle, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and the bodies of, and, and what else? The souls of men, the King James said, and slaves, and the souls of men, the souls of men. So this system, it's trading in the souls of men. Oh, Lord Jesus. You hear that? This is a well-calculated system to suck in as many and to take them to hell. That is why the Bible says in Isaiah 5 and verse 14, it says, Hell had enlarged itself and opened its mouth without measure. Yes. Because there will be a lot of people in these last days who will, who will be rushing to, to cover themselves with friendship with Babylon, committing fornication, even in the church. I am preaching here, the faithful will understand and they will listen. But some people are so politically born. And I, I shared here last week and I told you, saints, how do you know how I feel? You know, like when you want to vomit. You want to vomit. I feel sick. Sick in my stomach. And the Lord is saying, warn my people. Warn my people. How could you be a Christian? The time has come upon us. All the years I'm in ministry for 30 years. I'm a Christian this year for 40 years. I never had a problem with politics. Never. Why do I feel this way at this time? The Lord is telling me, tell my people you belong to me. You are supposed to be holy. How could you see these people are going to cut the throats of children, babies, they don't care. You know how many young men are going mad right now? Right now, we, uh, we, we have a sister right here in this church. She said, my brother never used to talk to her. He started, he smoked weed. He started to go mad. He started to go mad. He, he losing his mind. He asked for prayer. We have to send some of the pastors to, to, to go and, 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 and pray. I heard another situation about another gentleman. And I, 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 I was speaking to a minister, a friend of mine who has been in government for a number of years. And he said, Brother Gil, they're going mad in droves. He said, they full up down there in St. Anne's. A lot of young people, the way they mixing and you think the, you think our leaders did not know they know I said, that is my prime that is my, that is my um, that is my party that is my party that's your party but, but that is not my party my party is God I will vote how and when but I'm warning you now and I may become very unpopular that's all right but listen to me God says come out from among them Come out from among them, lest you receive a plague, lest you be partakers of our sins because they are trading in the souls of men. Okay? So, let us take heed and let us be not partakers of this wickedness where people are legalizing homosexuality and pedophilia and sending young people mad and, and all of that and pastors are afraid I will be afraid I'm not going to teach it because if I teach it the tides will fall <laughs> hey 
If I, don't, if I teach it, they will leave the church. Well, you didn't have them in the first place. They had you. You know? You are servant. We are servants of God. The minister is calling it the highest calling. When the pulpit goes, so goes the nation. The pulpit is not for coward people. Okay? So let us stand, and I want to charge this whole church to take a stand. Hear what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 22. Do not lay hands on any man hastily, nor share in other people's sin. Keep yourself pure. So do not share in the sins of any man. Now, as I close, as the church, we are supposed to speak up and speak out and be the salt and light. Revelation 12 and verse 11 it says, and they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Even though it caused them their lives. They did not love their lives to the death. They loved the truth more than their lives. And that's how they overcame. Okay. Uh, Matthew 5 and verse 3 says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under the foot of men. Salt is to resist evil. If salt accommodates to resist corruption, if salt does not affect corruption, it's no longer salt. It has lost its saltiness. Salt burns Salt is offensive to germs. Salt cannot settle along with germs. Salt will fight against germs. So if you are salt, you know, whatever comes around you that is not good, you will react to it and change it, but it will not change you. Okay? And that is what is happening with me now. If you find I'm sounding kind of offensive, it's because I'm salty. May, that, may I never lose my saltiness. Uh, Matthew 14, verses 3 and 4. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of, of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had said, it is not lawful for you to have her. You know, there are people who are saying today, don't talk about the identity card. Prophecy must be fulfilled, these things. You know, John the Baptist could have said, Herod with his brother's wife, prophecy must be fulfilled. In the last days it will be corrupt. No, he spoke. We as the church have a responsibility to speak, although we know many people will not change. It does not take away our responsibility to address the issues. We are supposed to be salt and light. We, we have to speak the truth and leave the rest to the Holy Ghost. It is, the, it is the purpose of the Holy Ghost to convict and save, but we are to speak the word of God. This does not mean that, you know, we, should, we will be campaigning for everything. We're going to campaign against the card. We're going to campaign against this. We're going to campaign against the other and protest. And by the way, in the book of Samuel, it said God told Samuel to protest against the people when they wanted a king. And to protest means to stand up for something and to stand up firmly and solemnly and tell them in no uncertain terms, this is what will happen if you go this way. And I, I'm saying, this is what the church ought to do. The church ought to be a voice. The church ought to be salt. The church ought to be light. The church ought to be a witness so that when God's judgment is ready, God will say, I had a voice. I had a man. You heard. You have no excuse. The voice of the prophet or the voice of the watchman is not necessarily to change people. Some people say the government will not change. We don't have to change the government, but we have to be a voice. Okay? So that is what we, 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 we are doing. And so, we are the salt and light, and we will continue to speak. So let us be mindful. I think I want to wrap up here. Yes, saints of God. So I think this is where we will bring the curtain down on this whole governmental issue. I think I, I really had to push it and uh, 
and, uh, and get a little emotion into it because I, I'm saying this to you in love. In love. I love this church. Uh, the brethren here, I mean, this is the church I know. Okay, I love the body of Christ. But I'm concerned for you as believers here. And I want you to stand. I want you to stand for God. Stand in holiness. I want your soul. I don't just want me and my family to go to heaven. If it's just me and my family going to heaven, then we are not going because a pastor can't just take care of himself. You must have a passion for everybody. Okay? So I want, I want the church to, to be informed of our position based on the word of God with regards to political affiliation. Begin to unwind yourself gradually. Love them. Pray for them, but don't get immersed in tribal, party, politics. And don't feel that you have sinned if you don't vote. Because God said in the last days, Come out of her, my people, lest you receive of her plagues and be partakers of our sins. Okay? So I took my time. Over the last couple of weeks, I endeavored to show you that we are moving into a governmental system that will combine politics, religion, and finance that will be dreadful and all the rest, that will be very destructive, that will blaspheme God, hate Christians, persecute Christians, seek to destroy the church, and the church, if we don't begin to see the difference now and we partake of them, we will become drunk with the wine of our, their fornication. By committing fornication, it means you are friendly with them, you are partakers, you are anything. And once that happens, you will lose discernment because a drunk man cannot reason properly, cannot walk straight, cannot function properly. Okay? So, again, let me say this as I go off the air. I am not against politics. I'm not against PNM, I'm not against UNC. But for your sake, and based on what God put in my spirit, I am telling you that there's a shift taking place and we need to kind of, we need to begin to estrange ourselves from that praise the lord god bless you so i look forward to seeing you on uh, uh, thursday but before i go i want you to raise your hands with, with me in the name of jesus father i thank you O god for your spirit your anointing, your presence, oh God. No weapon, I've said it over and over again. No devil, no demon, no evil power will stop this church. No man, no spirit of confusion, no back and all. As a matter of fact, glory be to God. God will arrest men. God will bring some to their knees. Glory be to God. I pray for a mighty flow of your power, of your spirit, of your anointing, oh God, that the members of this church, Shakala Mandorobo Saka, will begin to pray, will begin to cry out, will begin to seek the face of God, Father God, in this nebulous time, this dark time, this evil time, this wicked time, this little light that we have, we will let it shine. No zombie will ride our backs. We will not be wimps and weaklings in this hour. And this pulpit will be strong. I thank you for miraculous intervention. I thank you for miraculous provision. I thank you. Shando Robo Robo Come on. Raise your hands in your homes. I feel the power. This church will raise a witness in the earth. Oh, Shaka, something is happening. Oh, Sherebo Koriandarabosaya. Hey, Sakahamande Sukundo Rosha. My God, the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon some of you right now. Mmm, Mama, Rebe Sokotorobosa. 
I tell you, I gotta pray for you. I gotta pray for you. The Lord put it in my sack. You see, what is keeping this church is the anointing. <laughs> Ooh. What is keeping this church is the presence. Makato <laughs> Shadabaha. So I want you to pray with me right now. Come on, come on. This is the prayer part of the, of the Bible study. This is the, this is the prayer meeting part. Glory be to God. I feel the presence of the Lord moving right now. Dismantling. 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 The presence the Koshaka Raka Riko Oh my God. Somebody is receiving power, healing, strength in your spirit. Oh, Makoto Sharabaka. Come on, as we pray, I can feel the, 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 the restraining power of the church pushing back the evil. Glory be to God. Our God reigns. Our God has the final say. Our God is on the throne. Ooh. Hey, Shakatanda Robosaya. There's an anointing here, there's a presence. Ooh. Hey, Shakando Robosa, come on, pray with me. Some folks are praying right here in the studio. Reba Shaka, but I felt it from the time I come here. Before I open my computer, I could hear the Lord saying, Son, there's an anointing here today. And you're going to pray. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Encourage my people. Bless them. Strengthen them. Release my spirit upon them. Receive the anointing now. You young people, everybody, rise up in the power of God. Receive strength in your belly for the journey. The anointing is not locked down. And we pray that the church will be open. But in the meantime, glory be to God. Release what you have. Holy Ghost, power! Ooh. Hey! 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 If you're under the breakthrough, let him have his way. In the name of Jesus, in your homes, in your homes, in your homes, and an anointing is resting right now. Ekondo si Ikana, Lord, anoint every city. When they come down in this church, fire, 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 fire. I tell you, I saw people come into the church and they, as, as if the building itself had an anointing. From the time people approach, something. Was resting there. It's like the Azusa Street. Over the building there was an anointing. The fire brigade came to all the fire. They say, What fire? They say, We saw a fire from the distance. It was the Shekinah glory. And I believe it's here. <laughs> And God will continue. God will continue. You see this anointing? There's no explanation for the anointing. You can't put it in a bottle. You can't box it up. There's power. It's the Holy Ghost. The church will arise. God's people will arise. And we will arise in the Lord. Woo. Hey. Hey, Sukundo Robo Shaka. We are praying, 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 we are Katalaba. Rakandaya Baha. Rakande Robo Sika. Rebebebebebe Shata. 
Rekatu Sakayaba. Oh God. Oh Lord, send the fire right now. Oh Lord, send the fire right now and baptize everyone. Let the fire fall. Let the anointing fall. Let the fire, the fire, shaka takarabaha. As they come in the church, as they kneel down, let the fire, as they come to wait, as they come all night, as they come in the morning, as they come at noon, let the fire, let the fire, let the fire, let the fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost engulf your people. Those that are online, the fire of God, the presence of Jesus. My God, I feel this thing. Hey, Shakataya, Rororo Shakandarabasa, Rokota Salababa Shikatarabaha. Hey. Makoye sakatalaba. Makato shakahito shondorobo satayaba. Hmm. Hey, 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 hey. Woo. Jesus. Jesus. Hmm. Something is happening. Those of you that are praying, don't stop. I just feel the presence of God so strong here. There's breakthrough taking place. Yokes are being broken right now. Chains are being destroyed. So if you are not in this upon you, just push through with it. One shall chase a thousand. Ooh. Two ten times. Yes, Lord. My God, my God, there's an overflow here. Ooh. Hey, 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 hey. The river is flowing. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, let him have his way. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Rasha Talaba. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Pray in your homes, pray in your homes. There's an unusual anointing. Something is happening. It has to be a reason. Even what they are planning, I don't know what the government is planning, but we pray God's will be done. Jesus, 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 we break every yoke to keep the church down in the name of Jesus. We pray for Christian freedom in this land. In the name of Jesus, Christian freedom. Confound the opponents today, oh God. Ikato Shalaba. Rakanda Labaka. Rokondo. Father, we have stood in the gap. We have stood in your presence. Oh God, and we speak, we speak, we speak until Lord have mercy upon your people. Have mercy upon the church. Give liberty to your people. Oh God, and as you open the church, they will not take it for granted. But we will store up strength. Oh God. Woo. Jesus. Eturubosa. Don't hold it back. If the anointing is upon you, just pray that. Oh, 
Mighty, mighty flow here. Mighty flow. Mighty flow, Shakarabaha. Ooh. Hey, Sakarabaha. He koto shakatarabosa. Oh, mighty Father. Some things only your spirit can do. And we give you the time, we give you the space. Strengthen your church, oh God. E karababa sanda. Strengthen the members of Redemption Christian Center. Those that are viewing us on, online. Friends, oh God. Our sister in Canada. Those in the States, South Africa, Zambia, India, wherever they are viewing from, across the Caribbean. Oh God, strengthen your people. Encourage pastors, oh God. Hold up your hands, oh God. As we continue in the next couple of days, whatever, t weeks, Lord, let your presence be in this church. I pray our people will come out, roll out of their comfort zone and come down and into this sanctuary and seek your face. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for Connecting tonight. Share this Bible study. Share it with a friend because some people are not connecting the dots. Really, they are not. You know, as a matter of fact, for me, because I've been studying this for years, not knowing that the time will come when, and there are things that I didn't tell you. I mean, there are a lot of stuff I left out tonight, you know. But it makes it easier for me to flow with the material. I tried to stay along a particular line that I thought was more critical for you. Next week, we'll determine what to, how we will flow. Whew, even as I'm wrapping up, I'm feeling a strong surge of the Spirit of the Lord. And I want to encourage all of you and compliment all, of, all those of you that have been praying. I am I'm proud of you, and I'm proud of this church, and I'm encouraged when I see believers. I mean, I come here and I hear people crying, <laughs> crying. I say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. My greatest joy to see the church on fire. To see the members kept. And it blesses me so much. Because that's the most important thing. People need the Lord. And only the saints can, can, can reach them. So when the saints are kept, the nation is kept. Let us continue to love one another. Pray for the government. Pray for pastors across the nation. Pray for each other. Keep a sweet spirit. God bless you. I love you. Till we meet again in Jesus' name. Look forward to seeing you at a prayer meeting on Thursday. Be waiting. Don't come in the service late. Try and be there early. God bless you. Amen. Mighty King, faithful one, you Tonight, and 
Yahweh. We make a boast. You give us victory. Jesus. 